Nation. It's your boy Tom, and today we're going to be doing Auto Hotkeys version 2 INI files. Done quite a few of these with version 1, but I haven't really done anything with version 2. Um, so, kind of what I've been doing lately is when I'm creating a video where it's something pretty much completely new, I'm doing it both in version 1 and in version 2. Um, but over time, over the next, you know, however long it takes me, probably a while, I'm kind of going back and getting videos where, you know, they were pretty popular, it's a good topic, but back then I only did it in version 1, because just version 2 wasn't out yet, and just revisiting those, and I and I files were definitely a very popular one, um, so that was only in version 1, but now we're going to have a version 2. So, yeah, as I said, trying to do all videos in version 1 and 2, um, but I need to catch up and kind of make up for the ones that were never done in version 2. Uh, so INI files are basically, <clears throat> they're text files that are really good for storing data. Um, they can be kind of like, a lot of times I use them for settings or data that a uh, user inputs and we need to recall later. Um, not being stored like in, you know, just the script, the memory. But also, like, if you shut your computer down or shut the script down, relaunch it, you can still get that data. So it's just a great way to save data. I use it a lot for settings, uh, mostly, but yeah, there's lots of uses for it. <clears throat> and it just saves as, like, a regular text uh, file, which we'll see here. Um, so here, we're going to be running version 2. Um, the real biggest difference is just kind of a little bit of the formatting. You know, everything's going to be uh, inside the curly brackets because it's a function. We're in version one, I wouldn't really technically need these. I would just put a return down here and I'd be fine. Uh, but after that, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the first one we need to do is write. So that's just I and I write. And here is the data we want. We can get rid of these quotations to call upon a variable if we want. That way, if a user is doing like an input, um, they can. But here we're kind of defining what is going to be saved. Um, but you can change that up between using a variable, which actually is another video I'm going to be doing here, uh, hopefully soon, uh, is how to use variables in version 2, uh, just because I've done a ton of those in version 1, and those are very helpful. Uh, but here we're just going to do two uh, writes. Uh, we're just going to save the text blue, the text red, the location of where we're going to save it. Uh, once again, this is kind of built into the script, but you can also create a variable here without the quotation marks. Uh, in case you want the user to define where they want to save it. I'm just saving it to my desktop. What's it called? It's just called myfile.ini. Do make sure it's called an INI file. It just makes it easier. Uh, and then down here, we got two things here. Um, we're going to do colors. Um, that's kind of like our, you know, category, if you will. And then our key, um, which is just simply, I'm just putting one and two. Uh, obviously, it should be a little bit more detailed than what I'm doing here, um, but this is just an example. I scrolled over by accident. And you'll, you'll understand this a little bit better here once I create the file. So on my desktop, I actually do not have this INI file. Something that's really cool is when this script first runs and I do the write, if it sees that this file does not exist, it's actually just going to go ahead and create it. So let's actually go ahead and do that now. Um, let me find, what's this called? Test 3. So as you see, it's asking what I want to run. We're just going to run version 2. I know my version 2 is a little outdated. I haven't updated in a bit. Uh, let's see. Okay, we are running. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to press F1. Now, obviously, you're not really going to see what happened, anything there. You can put a message box if you want it. Uh, but here on my desktop is now this file. So an INI file is basically just a blank, blank looking page with a little gearbox right there. If you hover over it. It says uh, the type of files, the configuration settings. So that's great. We're going to head, we're going to open that in Notepad. And there you go. So as you see up here in the little brackets, it's putting the word colors. And this is basically just in that category, we got color one is blue, color two is red. So as you can see right here, that does that. Um, Another cool thing too is let's just let's add another one here and create a new category. We'll name it um, name. Why not? Uh, we'll save that. And the cool thing is you can because it's in the new category, you can use one as the key again, so it doesn't really matter. 
Um, and here we're going to write um, tab nation. So let's rerun that so we got the updated code. Oh, yep. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and press F1. i to close that down real quick. Let's reopen that. And there we go. <clears throat> so as you see, even though there's um, one called one and one here, that's fine. Because they're in different categories. So it's still going to know. It's going to look at which section to go to first. Then grab whatever data is in that field that you're requesting. Which we're going to show you now. So pretty easy. Even though this file was already created, it was able to add new stuff to it. Which is great. So it can edit the existing files. So now we need to retrieve that data. So here we're doing F2, put it in the curly brackets, value, <clears throat> that's the variable name, just change it to whatever you want, obviously be more descriptive than I am, and we're going to do an I and I read, and basically what you're doing is same thing for the most part, just a little different formatting, uh, inside the uh, parentheses here, quotations, put where the file is, what it's called, dot I and I, and then what um information you're trying to catch so we're going to go with colors and we're looking for number one so the one we wrote up here which was blue and then just uh use it however you need um, we're just going to do a message box for this video the value is and then value <clears throat> obviously you can change this variable name to whatever you want all right let's push f2 and there we go the value is blue which is correct, as you can see up here. I know you can't see my mouse very well on the screen, but I'm pointing at the word blue in the right file. Um, but yeah, and you can do, you know, if statements, you know, maybe you have a setting uh, dark mode, for example. Maybe you're creating a GUI with dark mode and the user wants it on. You can have it do the I and I read, look up dark mode, call the key on off, and if equals true, change the color of, you know, the GUI fields and stuff. There's a lot of cool things you can do with that. Uh, I mostly use it for settings. <clears throat> now we got F3, which is going to be I and I delete. And that's pretty self-explanatory. It's just deleting something there. That way our I and I file doesn't junk up over time. Uh, you know, we don't maybe need a lot of stuff in there. Uh, if the user says, like, I don't want to give you my phone number. Why bother making a field that stores no information? So same thing. Put our file path. What one we're going to delete. So we're going to delete that one that we were just talking about. The colors, number one. So the blue. Um, so let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and push F3. We're going to open this file again. In Notepad. And voila. It's gone. Now there's only red in there. Number two. So number one is gone. So it's a great way to just kind of clean up data and whatnot. Um, so yeah, pretty self-explanatory. Um, now, F4, I've done this a few times, uh, mostly for my sake, um, but you can give the users the option. I usually keep this kind of as like a hidden feature if I'm creating a program using an INI file. Uh, that way it all, it's easier to reference if I need to, the notepad versus... Um, going through all my code and finding all the places where it's doing different things. Uh, F4, I'm just doing run. So this is not really an I and I thing. This is literally just runs that file. So I'm going to press F4. Um, and all that does is just open the file and whatever your default program is. So this is just a kind of a cool way to just quickly jump in there and be like, oh, that's right. Under name, I'm only storing, you know, one piece of name. Uh, information under name and it's oh that's what currently it is uh so this is just a cool way and then you know from here people can like edit stuff um so for example if we had red i can go ahead and say like hello world push save so that one's oh, hell world let's go with hello world um that was number two so they can come back up to read the two. Uh, all right, let's relaunch that and push F2. And as you see, there it is. So it's also create this is just kind of an extra tidbit of just a way for you to quickly reference everything that's being stored or make manual changes. 
versus having to do it from your script every single time. Um, so that's kind of a cool uh, little feature there. All right. Uh, this is pretty much your very basic intro to INI files with version 2. Uh, if you guys want to see anything else with INI files when it comes to AutoHotKey version 2, uh, you definitely let me know in the comments below. Check out my INI version 1 because for the most part, you can watch those videos even though they're in a different version. It's still going to pretty much help you. Just check out what changed between version 1 and version 2. But for the most part, it's still mostly the same, just slightly different formatting and rules. Um, but at least you can watch those for now and uh, kind of manipulate it to version 2 until I get to a video uh, based on that. Also, just what else do you guys want to see in version 2 that I haven't done in version 2, but maybe I've already made a version 1? That way I can just make like an extension of that video. All right, everybody. See you on the next one. Thank you.